phrases to utter as Presbyterians is for things to be done decently and in order. This phrase comes from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians found in chapter 14. Somehow, we as a denomination found a way for this phrase to seep into every essence of our corporate being, from the way we worship, to how we meet in committees, to perhaps how we even pray and conduct our personal lives. It has become a battle cry, a mantra, a way of life. So it is understandable then that when we read the story of Pentecost here in Acts chapter 2, that many Presbyterians simply don't get it. What do you mean about the Holy Spirit filling the entire house? What do you mean the crowd started speaking in their own languages yet understood one another? Is this what they mean when they talk about speaking in tongues? Isn't that a bunch of stuff people make up? Don't they know we are to be doing things decently and in order? Where's Robert Rules? We hear about the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues, and we often think of the apostolic or Pentecostal movement with stories from Azusa Street Revival in Los Angeles, big tent revivals in the South, and snake handling in the Appalachians. We as orderly Presbyterians don't associate ourselves with such emotional behavior, especially in worship. Thank you all for standing still at that moment. <laughs> but do you know that Presbyterians haven't always been that way? Hear this account from St. Giles Cathedral, Edinburgh, Scotland, in the year 1596. As the Holy Spirit pierces the hearts with razor-sharp conviction, John Davidson concludes his message, steps down from the pulpit, and quietly returns to his seat. With downcast eyes and heaviness of heart, the assembled leaders silently reflect upon their lives and ministry. The words they have just heard are true, and the magnitude of their sin is undeniable. As the minutes pass, a growing sense of God's presence and holiness intensifies, and a spirit of deep repentance breaks in upon them, disrupting their silence. Suddenly, loud sighs and groans reverberate throughout the cathedral as proud men donning long beards and clerical garb begin to shake uncontrollably in tearful sobbing, melting under profound conviction of their sin. Caught by surprise and overwhelmed by the Spirit, those present during this momentous hour are about to experience a radical reorientation of their lives. In turn, they will then be used by God to carry the torture revival fire from this place, igniting a blaze that will seep across the Scottish landscape. This from David Calderwood's account of the true history of the Church of Scotland So what happens when things are not done decently and in order? What happens when the Holy Spirit seems to act up a bit? What happens when there is revival? I'd like for us to think about the Holy Spirit moving in our own lives this morning as we hear how God calls us individually sometimes decently and in order, other times in what seems like chaos and confusion. We hear the story of Pentecost, the, the birthday of the church every year on this Sunday. The apostles were gathered together and all of a sudden the Holy Spirit comes down upon them, not like a dove this time that we heard about with the baptism of Jesus, but as wind and fire more akin to what we hear about with Moses and the prophets of old. The Spirit gave each of the apostles other languages to speak, and there were others in the crowd who understood exactly what they were saying. People were asking what in the world was going on, 
And then Peter stands up to explain the phenomenon. No, friends, these guys aren't drunk. It's only nine in the morning. This is what the prophets were talking about when they said that the Spirit of God would fall upon the people, all people. And each person will hear the voice of God in their own particular way. And all who call on God's name will be saved. For those of us who have to keep our act together in this world, who have to have things just so, here is our good news for us this morning. The Spirit wants nothing to do with order. The Spirit is a wild and at times chaotic presence of God in our lives. Those same Scots who we heard about before, they and mother, many others in Celtic Christianity depicted the Holy Spirit as a wild goose flying throughout the earth and individual lives at its own pace and prerogative. The Spirit challenges us to live into the vision of the church that God has in mind, not that we have in mind. The church that perhaps makes us uncomfortable and keeps us on our toes. Yet we are called to be the church nonetheless. The Spirit is a mystery who continually seeks to lead us towards growth. Christina Cleveland of Duke Divinity School writes about God as Spirit like this. If God is always mystery, then God is always in some way the unfamiliar, beyond what we're used to, beyond our comfort zone, beyond what we can explain or understand. Many first learn to love and know God through the familiar, human face of Jesus, and from there come to recognize God's presence everywhere. Similarly, there are times and places to gather with people who are like us. But if that's all we're doing, we're not growing, and love is not growing in the world. Friends, with the day of Pentecost, as we witness to the truth that love was growing in the world that day, that wild, chaotic, uncontrollable spirit was moving in and throughout the hearts, minds, and tongues of the gathered apostles on that day, and that very same spirit moves within us today. We as Presbyterians will most likely always be doing things decently and in order. That's just part of our makeup. That's okay. But here is the God's and in our lives. And, and in the very same breath that we utter such a phrase, Today we celebrate that the Spirit is alive and well, moving in ways we may not understand, may not be able to wrap our heads around, and may not even know what direction it's headed towards next. The Spirit moves as fire, as a rushing wind, as a wild goose. Today, may we embrace the Spirit in the life of the church and in our own lives today, trusting in God's gracious movement and direction, allowing love to grow in the world. And all of God's children said, Amen.